Okay, I'll bite. Never ever use brake cleaner anywhere near something you might weld later on. Phosgene gas is not worth it. No chlorine, no phosgene. Look it up. Quick safety bulletin. Phosgene gas is no joke. One of the first air to water intercoolers I made for like a Fox Body Mustang. My brother and I were out in my dad's garage and I cleaned the part with chlorinated brake parts cleaner and started welding it. And both of us had to run out of the garage because we couldn't breathe. Pretty funny looking back on it because we didn't die. Out of these three vices, which one did you take home? We're going to start from least expensive to most. This is a Reed 205 with its fixed jaws. You can find ones in this condition. These are collector's condition with the jaws like perfect. It's like five to 600 bucks. Eight inch opening, good half a turn of backlash. We could probably fix this if we wanted to. And then we have the Snap-on Wilton. This is 1,250 bucks plus shipping. It has one inch wider jaws. And let's check out its backlash. Uh, not terrible, but not great either. Okay, with a non-standard base plate, so it doesn't mount to any of these fixture tables. Both of these don't. Or the Fireball Hardtail with a gigantic 12-inch opening, a jaws that you can change out, a base plate that you can mount to a standard fixture table, zero backlash, and a super butterly smooth spindle there. This one's a little more expensive. It's like $200 more than this one, but look what you get for it. Which one did you guys take home? Personally, I take home the middle one because it takes up less space and it has a spot on top to beat stuff on, that flat surface. Depends on what you're making though. And backlash doesn't matter on a vise, it matters on a lathe. This big vise is pretty badass though. It looks nice and sturdy and you know, it's got a way bigger opening. So if you were into that type of work, this would be a great vise to get. But I personally wouldn't mount it on a fixture table because of how much space it takes up you know I, I i'd consider mounting this on a big heavy duty pedestal you could move it around or a different table even if you put this on a corner of this fixture table you're still wasting a lot of space where you got holes personally for what i do i really like this one i don't i have no idea what brand or model it is the stickers wore off on it but it's got a nice big surface you can beat parts on to metal form them and the head swivels so you can clamp stuff in vertically or at any angle you want if needed Really happy with this. But if you had bigger jobs, maybe as a secondary vice, that fireball tool one would be great if you have the money to spend on it. And my vice has a little over a half a turn of backlash, but that has never bothered me. I don't really care. All that really matters is if it clamps the parts down tight and holds them in place good no matter where you put them in the jaws. If you're concerned about backlash, just tighten this up back here. Not a big deal. There, now it has barely under less than a quarter turn of backlash. Not that it really matters. Price went up 1980 So you guys let me know if you think this is ethical. It says Fireball Hardtail Spokane, Washington on the side, nice and clear. And then up here it says Design in Spokane, Washington, made in Taiwan. What do you think about that? You see a vice like this and it says Spokane, Washington. Where do you think it would be made at? Personally, I usually don't care where something's made at if it's a quality product, but to me, that's a little bit shady. Kind of deceitful. What's the trick to get such a wide B profile? More heat, wider puddle. That's all there really is to it. But if you go too wide on thinner material, you're going to overheat it and it might crack or turn hazy. So it just takes a lot of practice to find out where the sweet spot is. Yeah, but can you flip your hood down without using your hands? I'll believe it when I see it. What is it with guys using helium and argon? So the old timers used to call TIG welding heli arc welding because all they had was helium. I guess before argon was discovered. I don't know, I might be wrong on that. But so this is an A75 bottle, 75% argon, 25% helium. What the helium does is it acts, I'm not you know a chemist or anything, but what it does is it's like similar to adding 10% or so, you know, some arbitrary number, 10, 15, whatever, percent more heat into the part. So if you only had a 200 amp welder and you wish you had a 225 amp welder, try out a little bit of helium in your argon mix. That'll get you a little bit more penetration, get the puddle hotter. I used to use this stuff when I started out with 180 amp Miller Synchrowave 180, and this helped out a lot when I had bigger projects. My personal experience with it though is with the helium in there, I couldn't get as shiny of a bead as with pure argon. And then there was a little bit more like a subtle gray color to the etching. 
with the gas that I was using. So if I have an adequate welder with enough heat, I don't ever use it. I find I get a more stable arc and keep the tungsten in nice. If after sharpening to a point, I then grind it blunt. I guess it depends more on what tungsten you are using. Hey, check this out, all you tungsten grinder lovers out there. You probably already have a drill, right? current carrying capacity if you're welding aluminum because if you leave it like that and say try to weld it you know 250 amps or whatever it's going to overheat that tip and eventually make a dingleberry and that screws up your arc it makes the puddle wander around so he puts a blunt tip on it like that so the problem with a blunt tip though, is it's not gonna hold its shape very well either. It's gonna hold its shape better than a sharp point. And then if you have a rougher grinder than this, I'll leave a link below for this one that I'm using. I was really happy with this when I bought it off Amazon. But if you're, if you're using a rougher grinder than that, which most people are, it puts striations across that flat surface. So you have rough jaggeds on one side. So when you start welding, the arc will kind of go off to that side. And those rough cuts that are hanging off, they ball up and make the tip of it rough. So yeah, if you're welding thicker aluminum, this is better than just a point, but there's a better way to do it. And I'm sure some of you guys are sick of seeing these elbows, sorry, but it's a good example. So back when I was welding these and I was better at welding, just for more repetition, I did not shape the tungsten like that. If I was to shape it with a flat land on the end, I probably would have had to go back to the grinder and touch up that tungsten, I don't know, five to ten times. And welding all of these parts, I didn't have to go regrind my tungsten a single time. Personal preference, though, do whatever works for you. 